All right, let's finish up this test review here. Um, starting with 17, and let's see what we got. This is 14. Looks a little weird, but that's a 14 right there, 4. And uh, we want to solve for x. Well, it's not a right triangle, so we can't just use a sine, cosine, tangent. So uh, we're going to have to use either the law of sines or law of cosines. So uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm solving for x. I do know the angle opposite x. Um, what about this 60? Do I know the side or the angle opposite 60? No. Do I know the side that's opposite 93? No. But I can't find this side. There's really no way I can find that side right now. Uh, but I can find this angle right here. And we do that pretty easy. Let me clear this. It's just 180 minus those two angles, and that's what that third angle is going to be. So minus 93, minus 14, and we get 73. So this angle up here is 73 degrees. Now this is not really drawn that uh, much to scale, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just so you see what's going on. Now we can actually see something. Look, I've got an angle and a side that are opposite each other. And I've got an angle, and I can find that opposite side right there. So law of sines is what we're going to use on this. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go um, x over the sine of 14. And then over here, we'll put the sine on top. So that's 60 over the sine of 73. Now with the law of sines, the book teaches it like uh, this. The sine of a over side a equals sine of b over side b. Uh, you could do that, that's fine. Or the way I showed you was like this. To tell you the truth, I would pick and choose. Like whatever the variable is, for instance, uh, the side was the variable, so I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna write it like this if you're trying to solve for the side. Why? Because x is already on top. Just makes it a little bit easier if um, x is on the top. So if I was trying to find an angle using the law of sines, like the sine of a, I would put this on top and then put the x on the bottom, or whatever number that is on the bottom. So anyway, I hope that helps a little bit uh, on which way you should do it. So you can do it either way. Um, you just have to be consistent. If the side goes on top on this one, it has to go on top on this one. If you put the sine of the angle on top, the sine of the angle has to go on top on this one. All right, anyway, let's keep doing this. So we made this kind of easy for us, so all we got to do is multiply by the sine of 14. You say, well, I thought we cross-multiplied. Well, sure, you could cross-multiply, but um, it's just easier. Look, this is being, what's being, uh, what's going on right here? It's x divided by the sine of 14. How do we get rid of something that's being divided? Well, we multiply. So we multiply this by the sine of 14 and multiply that by the sine of 14. So let's bring up the calculator. Get that out of the way. All right, and let's uh, punch that into the calculator and see what we get. So we've got 60 times the sine of 14. And we take that and we divide it by the sine of uh, 73, sine of 73. And let's see what we get, 15.17, and it says to round to the nearest tenth. So uh, 15.2 would be your answer. So x equals 15.2, just like that. All right, let's move on to number 18. All right, here's what the problem says. They don't draw a triangle for you. But um, I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and draw the triangle out so we see what's going on. So let's draw the triangle in a different color. Uh, let's see. We, one angle is 156 de degrees. So, I mean, this doesn't have to be drawn perfectly to scale. But 156 is obtuse. So, or it's greater than 90, so I'm going to have an obtuse triangle. So we might as well make it look kind of close. So we'll call that X. And it doesn't really matter what we call the other ones. Let's call that angle Y and let's call that angle Z. And so angle X is 156, so that would go right here. Uh, side Y is 18. Now if I call this angle Y, side Y has to be this one right here. Okay, the length of that side, because it's opposite, so Y, little y, is equal to 18. That's opposite angle Y, which is capital Y. Um, side Z, which is 21, is opposite angle Z. Here's angle Z, so side Z would be right here. So little z would be 21. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find x, little x. This is big x, this is angle x. So little x is right here. That's what we're trying to find. Well, this one works out perfect with law of cosines. We've got an angle, and we've got the two adjacent sides to it, and we're trying to find the opposite side of the 156. So that's a perfect opportunity to use the law of cosines. So let's go ahead and use that. 
and see what we get. So how do we use the law of cosines? It starts off kind of like Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be x squared equals. So it's always the opposite side of the angle that we're going to use is equal to the two other sides squared. So it's 21 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times those two sides multiplied together again. So I'm going to go 21, 18 cosine of what the angle is that's opposite this side. And of course that's 156 degrees. All right, so this works out perfect for a uh, for calculator now. I don't have to move anything over. I kind of have x by itself. You know what we're going to do though, right? We're going to take the square root of all of this when we get rid of this x squared. So if I solve for x, I'm going to plug all that into my calculator, take the square root, and then I should have my answer. Now there's one thing about this that you have to be mindful of. Um, this is how I would do this. I would put parentheses, uh, let's see, yeah, I put parentheses around this right here. Okay, so I'd go 21 squared plus 18 squared, put it in parentheses, minus, and then um, do all this. In fact, let's see, did I put parentheses around this? You know, it wouldn't hurt if we did. I'm going to. You know, I kind of forget what I <laughs> normally do. I'm actually in my classroom right now, talking to nobody. That's pretty weird. But you're listening, so that's not so weird, I guess. So anyway, let's put some um, stuff in the calculator. Wow. Let's move this up a little bit so I can see. Let's see if we can fit everything in here, plus see the calculator as well. Um, can I fit it all in here? Well, we'll get the idea. We'll do it like this. You know what I could do? I could uh, move that over about like that. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, let's turn her on, and let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to go uh, 21 squared plus 18 squared. So, oops, 21 squared squared right there plus... Oh, actually, oh, I know what I was going to do. <coughs> I know, I, I don't know, I was... This and this I don't really need. It's not that big of a deal because I'm just going to, when as soon as I hit minus, it'll add those up and then I'll subtract that in parentheses. All right, now I feel better about this. So 21 squared plus 18 squared minus, and now I put a parentheses. That's really important. See that red parentheses? I put that in right there. It didn't automatically give it to me. I put it in my calculator. I think it's pretty important. So we go 2 times 21 times 18. Uh, we can just hit cosine of 56, or you can hit times, I guess, but let's just hit cosine of 56. Close that parenthesis. Now watch, that parenthesis just closed in the 56. I need another parenthesis to close this one right here. So I put a second parenthesis. All right, hit equals, and now all this stuff right here is 342.25. That's not my answer. I have to solve for x, so I have to take this and take the square root of it. So I'm going to hit um, second function right there. So I'm going to take the square root of my answer right there. And so what it's doing is taking the square root of that big number, and it gives me 18.5. But the problem says to round it to the nearest tenth. Is that right? Um, let's see. I'm on 18. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? 342, take the square root. I tell you what, let me pause this and try this one more time. Because I'm not getting the answer that I have written on my paper. So I must have done something wrong. Let's go back and check to see what I did wrong. Oh my goodness, you probably saw what I did already as soon as I punched it in. I put the cosine of 56, not the cosine of 156. So that will definitely make a difference. Let's try this again. So 21 squared plus 18 squared minus parentheses. 2 times 21 times 18 times the cosine of 156, 156. Close that parentheses, close it again, hit equals, there we go, big old number, 1455. But we got to take the square root of that, so take the square root right there of my answer. Close that, hit it, ah, there we go, 51 or 38.15, and it says round it to the nearest tenth. So that would be 0.2. So the answer is 38.2. That looks like the answer 
on my answer key. Thank goodness for that. All right, well, messed up a little bit. I just, I don't know if I forgot to put it in or if I just punched the button and it just didn't press and I didn't notice it. Whatever. There you go. There's the answer. Let's go on to the next one. 19 and 20, vectors, magnitude, and direction. All right, let's see what we've got here. Let's change to different color. What haven't I used? Um, I already used yellow, but we'll use it again. It says find the magnitude and direction of this vector PQ. So we're going to write PQ, and they tell you what point P is. It's negative 2, 4, and point Q is negative 5, negative 6. All right, we've got to find the magnitude and the direction. Remember, the magnitude is the length of this line. Look, I don't even have to graph this thing right now. We'll graph it in a second. But I just want to show you, you don't even have to graph it and look at it to be able to find the magnitude. The magnitude is the length of the line. Well, if I got two points, how do you find the length of a line if I give two points? Absolutely, that's the distance formula. If you remember the distance formula, it's just like Pythagorean theorem. That's what it's based on. All right, so we just take the uh, x's and we subtract them from each other. You can do it any either way you want to. Um, let's go like this. Negative 2 minus negative 5 minus a negative is plus so we get negative 2 plus 5 and then you do the y's 4 minus negative 6 is the same as 4 plus 6 let's see what we get that's a 3 squared which is 9 this is 10 squared which is 100 take the square root of that and it's the square root of 109 just add this stuff in there and that's it that's all you gotta do for that if you wanted to throw that into a calculator if you felt so inclined you could um, Remember, it's approximately 10.4. It's not exactly 10.4. This is the, act, the uh, exact answer. This is an approximation. I would accept either one. I'm perfectly fine with that. But let's do this. Let's, uh, let's go to white. It shows up a little bit better. And let's do a little x and y axis here. Um, let's scooch this over just a little bit. I think that's on the screen. And... Let's do a nice big x and y axis right here. And let's plot the points and see what's going on. Because the direction, I'm really going to need to visualize what's going on for the direction. Um, this right here, I just know I'm finding the length of it, so I'm finding the distance. So on this one, though, I think it's pretty important to visualize what's going on. Negative 2, 4. It doesn't have to be exact. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you wanted to use graph paper, you could. But this will work just as well. Um, this is P, and it's at negative 2, 4. Let's do this one, negative 5, negative 6. Negative 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and that would be Q. And that point is negative 5, negative 6. All right, now I will change colors here. Let's get this nice purple or magenta or whatever it is. And we'll connect them. Now, it's important that you know where it starts and where it ends. Okay, this is vector P, Q. This means something. It means it starts at P and it ends at Q. So we started at P and we ended at Q. I'm going to put a little arrow right here just to indicate the direction of this vector. That's pretty important stuff, I think. All right now, what in the world do we do? We've got to find the angle that this vector is making. The angle to what? Well, to the positive x-axis. So let's put a little x and y axis on there and uh, see what's going on. I got somebody calling me, so give me a second. All right, daggone telemarketer calling me. How about that on your cell phone? Isn't that the worst thing in the world? Calling your cell phone telemarketer it should be illegal. All right, what are we going to do here? Let's make this a nice, we'll make this, uh, I don't know, we'll use this blue right here. What I'm going to do is at this point right here, what I'm going to do is make a uh, X and Y axis, to tell you the truth. Let's do this. Let's get rid of this. Kind of get it out of the way. Oops. If I can grab it. There we go. Let's, um, I don't know, let's just get it way out of the way. And just just long enough where I can do my X and Y axis thing. I'll go a little bit darker blue. So, I'll try to match these up. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. It's not really that big of a deal, but we just want some kind of a reference. See, I put, didn't put my dot exactly right, but that's okay. That's good enough for right now. All right, so here's our point, and what are we trying to find? And let's go back to this purple so we'll stay consistent with this. 
the magenta. We're trying to find this angle from the positive x-axis. That's the positive x-axis. See what I did? I took this point, this um, initial point is what they called it, and um, I drew an x and y axis right here. That's the y axis. This is the x axis. We're kind of looking at this as if it was our origin. Okay, but it's not. Here's the actual origin, but this is the origin of our little x and y axis. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the angle from the positive x axis going counterclockwise or going uh, yeah, counterclockwise until we hit the line. So that right there is the angle that we want to find. That's pretty important. Some people on the test only found the angle inside the triangle we're going to show in a second. You've got to find the whole thing. All right, we'll talk about that in a little, little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I want to make a right triangle out of this. And again, I saw some of the tests and some crazy things were going on uh, making the triangles out of this. What I'm going to do, and let's just do this in a different color. Just make this a green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the end of my vector and I'm going to pop it straight up to my x-axis. So I'm way off here. Let's say it hit about right there, okay? You get the idea. That little point, this little point right there should be a little closer to that. All right. So you get the you get the basic idea. Here's our right triangle. We've got a nice right triangle right here. And so now I actually know the lengths of these sides. Remember this uh, point? I kind of put it out of the way. Grab it. Okay, remember this point right here? It was negative 2, 4. So what did that mean? We're at negative 2. And we go up 4. If you want to find the lengths of the x and y coordinates of this triangle, watch us do this. We're at negative 2. And how far did we go over? We went over to negative 5. Do you remember doing this thing where it said break it down into its components? If you want to do that, that's pretty helpful, actually. So watch. Let's subtract the x's from each other. But what do we do? We always go x2 minus x1, which is from the terminal to the initial. So negative 5. Um, let's just do it up here. Negative 5 minus negative 2. So that would be negative 3. And then we do the y's. Again, you go from the terminal to the initial, negative 6 minus 4. Well, negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. What does that tell you? What, why do we care about this? Because this tells you how long this little line is right here. It's 3. To tell you the truth, I really don't even care if it's positive or negative at this point. I just know that from here I go 3 to the left and 10 down, or the length of that is 3. So that little bit right there is 3, and from here to here is 10, right? From there to there. So look what I have. I've got a right triangle. I've got a right triangle, and um, I can now find the magnitude, which I already found before, but I can find this angle. That's what's important. See this angle right there? That's the angle that I want to find. Um, and then we're going to do one more thing to it. So how can we use this? Well, look, knowing these two sides of the triangle are very important because of now I have an opposite of this angle and I have an adjacent. So I'm going to use the tangent. So the tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And now we just use a calculator for this. Remember, we're going to take the inverse tangent of this. So let's turn it on. And we're going to do second function tangent of 10 over 3. 10 divided, oops, why do I keep doing that? Pushing the wrong button. It's 10 divided by 3. All right, so it's the inverse tangent. Because I'm trying to get theta by itself. So I get rid of the tangent by taking the inverse tangent. So the inverse tangent of 10 over 3. And that is 73.3. So theta is 73.3. But that is not my final direction. Because look, what are we taking it from? We're taking it from the positive x-axis all the way over here. What did we just find? We just found this angle inside the triangle. That's 73.3 degrees. So what do I need to do to that 73.3? I need to add this much to it. I hope you see that. See, that's 180 right there and then you add the 73. So really, let's scooch this up a little bit. So really, it's 180 plus 73.3. And that is what, 253, right? Yeah, 253.3 degrees. That is your final direction right there. And that's the answer that you want to circle, 253.3 degrees. Hope that made sense. Uh, go back and look at the uh, original video that I did from that section, and it, I think I rambled a little bit today, but uh, I think I think that helps. I hope so. Well, anyway, there you go. That's one through twenty. It's in three different uh, sections, but you can take 
a section each day and uh, be ready for the test. Remember, we're going to do this retest on Monday. The questions will look similar to what uh, this Chapter 8 test looked like, but um, they'll be a little bit different, a little bit of a twist. I'm not making it any more difficult, just just maybe a little different, change the numbers up a little bit, maybe change a little bit of the style of problems, but they'll be pretty much the same as we just went over. So if you know how to do this test, you should be fine on the retest. So make sure you study this hard, and let's get a good grade. Remember, this is the last grade of the marking period. Okay, enough talking. Have a good weekend studying your geometry. Bye.